Stanley began his expedition from Newton, Massachusetts, with a goal of finishing on top of Mount Washington. Now, the automotive age was dawning, and on August 31st, 1899, an unlikely little vehicle looking like a horse-drawn buggy without the horse became the first motor car to climb the mountain. As noted in Flora Stanley's account of the adventure, their journey received more laughter than laurels as motor vehicles were still a virtually unknown sight to the general public. With the amazed responses of the folks in each village they passed through combined with the success of the Mount Washington ascent proved the value of this well-conceived publicity stunt. But few realized that Stanley's vehicle was the first of many that would follow and that a new age had begun. Even F.D. E. Stanley himself, F.O. Stanley's twin brother and partner, wasn't sure of what the new invention would be capable of. As expressed in an 1897 letter to his wife after one of their horseless carriages mm, nearly caused an accident in town. I wrote to you some time ago about motor carriages. Esse, esse trecho é... Ele tá certo. Ele tá certo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Não, porque se ele não parar, como é que a gente vai passar aqui? In any case, the Summit community welcomes you. Take the time to visit the historic Tip Top House, which holds the record as the oldest Summit building standing since 1853. The Sherman Adams State Park building will offer you a top of the world perspective from the observation deck. Hot meals and restrooms are inside. While there, wander through the Mount Washington Observatory Museum and gift shop downstairs for a look at some rare mementos of the past. And if you only see one thing, be sure to stop at the historic summit stage office, which is where the observers have while measuring the world's highest recorded wind. Oh my gosh, how Olha o cheiro de freio queimado. Summit in the Northeast, you are going ah, to the birthplace of legends, following up a no. path that leads yes, through okay. time and winds its way through woods, wind, and weather. At the state park on top, you'll see the home of the Mount Washington Observatory and the historic Summit Stage Office, which is where the world's highest. Alpine zone, home to many rare and unique forms of plants and flowers. 
there will be many opportunities to stop your car and walk around, so please take care to leave these special environments as you found them. It is only because others have been thoughtful in past generations that these small endangered treasures are still here for us to enjoy. So if you watch your step, future generations might have the same opportunity. Sources that we all treasure. Now just imagine that this road opened to the public in 1861 and the scenes which are about to unfold before you have remained unchanged. Also unchanged is the need for safe driving. Now the road's remarkable safety record over the past century and a half is because drivers, whether in Ascend the mountain and then descend after your visit to the summit. These driving tips will help maximize safety and minimize inconvenience. Please keep the following in mind as your journey continues. The auto road has two way traffic coming and going at all times. Keep to your side of the road. Don't worry, it's wide enough for two cars to pass anywhere. This may cause the engine to overwork. There will be plenty of cool air to refresh you as no, you continue to gain elevation. Well. If the vehicle does begin to run hot, turn on the heater. It may sound strange, but it yep. will actually help cool the engine. Should you find yourself driving in a fog at any time while on the mountain, turn on your headlights for the sake of all oncoming traffic. And please remember, it's a New Hampshire state law that all persons under 18 years of age must wear a seatbelt. If either on the way up or down, for any reason you need assistance, flag down one of the white and green vans or road crew pickup trucks. Our drivers will be happy to help you in any way. Also, remember that cars coming down should yield the right of way to cars going up. Now, let's get to the storytelling about the place you oh, come to. Cars coming down? Oh, I'm so good. The creation of our road to the sky all began back in 1853 when the New Hampshire legislature granted a charter to General David Maycomber to build the eight mile road to the summit. It was a challenging task he set for himself, to say the least, but he had a vision. So the White Mountains were beginning to gain a reputation as a destination resort, with grand hotels catering to wealthy travelers for the summer season. His path to the top of New England would surely be the high point of any visit to the North Country. Your presence here today confirms just how right he was. Anyway. One of the first of these grand hotels was the Glen House, which was located at the base area from which you began your climb. This hotel and three others burned to the ground over the years, around the turn of the century and after, though the base area is still referred to as the Glen, as it always has been. Seasons may change, but they always return, and the day will again surely come when travelers will find lodging in this most historic and remarkable of places. As you drive on through the hardwood forest, try to imagine what the early road builders faced. Dense trees and underbrush, sloping ridges and immense boulders and ledges were at every turn. Not a particularly inviting place to excavate a road, but this is Mount Washington and no adversity <laughs> would be too great if it resulted in the conquest of the peak. One young woman who visited the Glen House in 1854 explored the work of the Glen House. 
and memories of the road as a work in progress. Look, he found the Okay. Okay. 